If you are putting your hands together for Jesus, give it your time. If you are putting the hands together to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, I am that I am, the faithful Father, the ancient of days, the salvation and the bishop of our souls. Just put your hands together to him. Just worship him. As you are putting your hands together, begin to worship him. Because he's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the I am that I am. He's our Father. He's our Lord. He's our grace. He's the grace behind our life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshiped. Because you are here before our coming. 
before the foundation of the earth, you knew that on the 29th of May, 2022, I will be here to speak about you to your children. Lord, we exhort you and we say, be thou exhorted for this in the name of Jesus. Father, I present myself before you this morning and I pray that you use me as a channel to express yourself this morning in the name of Jesus. That right message that you have your church for your church, you will release it unto them in Jesus' name. Thank you, righteous Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want your amen to be like the amen of a champion. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let us be seated. Just put your hands together for Jesus one more time. Uh, this morning, uh, before I start at all, I want to appreciate my daddy and my mommy. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the opportunity given to me and then for the mentorship to stand before the fold of Christ. Praise the Lord. Uh, this morning, we are going to do more of prayers. Amen. But before we go into the prayers, the message will be very short. So, and that is why I want you to listen very carefully. Praise the Lord. You should listen what? You should listen what? So the title of the message is Winning the Battles Over Your Family. Today is Family and Welfare. Winning the Battles Over Your Family. And we all know how important the family is to the Almighty God. You know, the moment He created uh, all the creations in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, you know, He had to go ahead and create Adam. And after the creation of Adam, He went ahead, He created Eve. And then Genesis, chapter 2, from verse 21. Genesis 2 from verse 21, I read. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the ribs which the Lord had taken from man made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, Now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman. Praise the Lord. No, you know, to tell you how important marriage is, so the first thing God did after creating everything was to conduct a marriage service. Praise the Lord. You know, he said, uh, say after me, I love, I will love him in, in tears, in this, in that. And said to the woman, also, to the man also, say after me, I will love her in this, I will take care of her, and then I now declare you husband and why? Praise the Lord. And you know, Adam, in his wisdom, he said, wow. Praise the Lord. You know, when the Lord said, you cannot kiss the bride, he said, wow, this is the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman. Amen. But the moment after that, the chapter 3, the first time the Bible will ever introduce devil, he introduced him in a family devil was introduced in a family. That was his first activity in life. It was in the family that he performed it. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 3. A student of the Bible. The Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God has made. And he said unto the woman, Ye hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every trees of the garden, you know, and so on and so forth. So we, most of us, we know the story, how devil tried to entertain, uh, deceive Eve, and then she ate the forbidden fruit. So which means right from the foundation, devil has been fighting families. And devil has not changed. He has not repented. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 13 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and for the same thing with the devil is the same yesterday he's still the same today and he will not repent isn't it so he's still in the business of observing family 
you know, he had to observe the family of Adam and Eve and saw that these people are happy. There's joy in this family. And he struck. He quickly did what? He attacked that family. Praise the Lord. So devil is still in the business of attacking family even till today. So and that is why you need to win the battles against your family. Because devil has not died. Amen. Or oh, has devil died? He has not died. Devil is still alive. And that is why you see that sometimes when couples, when they probably pray at the middle of the night, the following day, they will start fighting. Why? Because devil is fighting. They, are, he has, they have already touched him in his kingdom and he's not happy. He will just look for small matter. Just small matter like this and they will start uh, saying, no, why did you do that? No, they, they, uh, you know, argument can start. But wise couples will know that this is from the kingdom of darkness. But uh, turn, with your, turn with me your Bible to the book of John chapter 2. What was the first miracle that Jesus Christ performed? What was the first miracle that Jesus Christ performed? Anybody? He turned water to wine, which means the first thing that Jesus Christ also did was in the family. It was in a marriage that Jesus Christ performed his first activity because marriage is very, very important as far as God is concerned. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. John chapter 2 says they went to Jesus. Let me read it. John 2, I read it from verse 1. And third day, there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciple to the marriage. So they invited Jesus and the disciple to the marriage. They also invited the mother of Jesus to that marriage. Praise the Lord. So I want us to pray with understanding. That's why I'm going into this little um, explanations. Amen. You know, I've introduced to us that the first activity that devil performed was in the family. And the first activity that Jesus Christ also performed was also in the family. It was in the marriage that he performed that uh, activity, that first miracle. You know, they went to the mother of Jesus that they are, they've run out of wine. And the mother had to quickly go to meet Master Jesus that there's no wine. No. You know, unlike uh, mothers of today, they say, uh, there's no wine. Say, go and call him for me. Is it not Jesus, my son? Tell him to come. But the woman did not do that. She knew the grace upon the son that this one is not ordinary son. She had to go and meet him. That they said there's no one. Do you know the response that Jesus Christ gave? If the children of nowadays were to give that same response to their mother, especially from Africa contest, they will fight. That nonsense. How old are you? What do you think you are? You are so proud. Eh? Is it because I came to you to what is it? What are you even carrying up and down that you are saying this? Praise the Lord. But the mother did not say that. I read John chapter 2, verse 4. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. And the woman just went gently to go and sit down. And he told his disciples, his mother said unto the servants in verse 5, Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. You know, if it were to be some mothers, they will say, <laughs> Hello, excuse me. You know what we can do now? It's like uh, this uh, young man is full of himself. You know, he will, she will water down the Lord Jesus Christ. And she will have missed that opportunity. And they will have missed that miracle. You know, devil will always come to the family. But the duty of the Lord Jesus Christ is to restore joy. You know, when the wine finished, there was no joy. They needed one. So Jesus Christ has to restore joy into that marriage. Amen. So that is what Jesus Christ is doing in every marriage that makes Jesus Christ as their foundation. Every marriage that allows Jesus Christ to be uh, the mouthpiece, that they seek for guidance, just like the way Mary, Mommy Mary went to Jesus to seek for counseling that there's no wine. If Jesus Christ had told them, eh, there's no wine, then what next? Go and buy now. <laughs> there's no wine. It has finished. <laughs> In the people that want to do the marriage, if they are not capable of doing marriage, why are they doing it? 
They should go and buy. Why are they coming to me? Am I a magician? But you can see that you see the way the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and do it because he knew that it's a very sensitive matter. That marriage is very, very sensitive. Who knows? Probably uh, the Lord Jesus Christ was just probably speaking in tongues as when they went to him and they brought soko bali braka shandali ba reke tepo soto and he was said, my hours has not come. Woman, my hours has not. You know, he might be praying to the to the Father when he went to meet him and there was joy, uh, there was restoration in that womb. And I pray that if there's any home that is experiencing one or two challenges, the Lord will bring restoration to your family in the name of Jesus. Don't forget that devil wants to strike family. And if there's any family that has sustained injury, the Lord will heal that family in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your amen be louder. The Lord will, the Lord will restore every family in the name of Jesus. We should know that Satan's priority is to destroy family. That is priority, is priority number one. That's why he had to observe that family critically. I don't know what you are experiencing in your family currently, if it is joy. Please just know that somebody is somewhere observing critically. Just like the Lord Jesus, just like the way God told Job that you, the Lord told devil that you observe Job, my servant. He said, ha, ha, ha. I've been observing him. I've been observing him. I want to strike him. Unfortunately, you have put an hedge around about him. Praise the Lord. Which means everyone that is having joy, peace, be careful. It's not the time to relax. Amen. It's the time to do what? To intensify prayers, to be more observant. Because devil is a very good observant. He just looks for a time of lapses and he will strike. Lapses. Uh, probably, brother uh, Adam just went to maybe to take his bath or whatever. I said, Oh, this young man, he has gone to take his bath. And the other one was just like, Okay, <laughs> let me just, let me just uh, visit these people. <laughs> but if I visit two of them, uh, you know, they will, they will, they can bounce back on me. Let me visit them when they are not together. Praise the Lord. So, and that is why you need to strive at all times to make sure that you are united in your family. You know, it's just like somebody that tells you that, I like you, but I don't like your children. Does that person really like you? Amen. Does that person like you? Say, you know what? In your family, I only like your wife, but you and your children, I don't like you. And that person, does that person really like you? No. Because that family is one entity. And that is why devil really wants to scatter every family. So if you must win the battle over your family, you need to be prayerful. So what are the battles that you must win over your family? Just quickly, I just put down just three things here. The first one is the security of your family, the safety of your family. That's Ephesians 6.10. Technical, please help us to project. You need to win the battle of security over your family. Unfortunately, you know, devil knew that the, the woman was not all that secure, that they were not together with, uh, she was not together with Adam. And that's when uh, devil struck the, the family. So you must fight. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11. Yes, Ephesians 6, 11. Put on the old armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. So which means devil has some wise, some tactics, some tricks, some strategies. Amen. So if he tries one and he sees that it's not working, he wants to try another one. If he tries this and he says that that one is not working, he wants to try another one. And that is why the security of your family is very important. And how do you make your family to be secure? You secure them in the place of prayer. Amen. Like I told us, the devil has not changed. He has not repented. Amen. And that is why God also has not changed his word. If you hold him by his word, you hold him in the place of prayer, you constantly, continuously, consistently 
standing in the gap for the hope in the place of prayer the family will be secure the other thing the battle you need to win over your family is the family uh, is the battle of habits you need to look at the foundation of where you are coming from the foundation of where your wife is coming from so both of you need to strike a balance amen you know because it's one of the tactics that the enemy will want to use he wants to see how the foundation is so that he can be able to hold on to it and strike amen so if somebody is from the foundation that your mom uh married snatched somebody's husband and snatched another one and snatched another one so now you are married you should know that you need to sit down and pray praise the lord you need to do what sit down and pray because devil still want to repeat that same thing in your family or your dad is the one that marries 16 wives amen and says um you know i'm not um a confessious man i'm just a very humble person all my mates they married 33 i only married 16 and people are complaining praise the lord <laughs> so you should know that <laughs> that man has caused trouble so he has caused trouble you need to address it in the place of prayer so what are the things what are the patterns that you are seeing in the family you need to observe it and address it in the place of prayer you know just like uh, one of my uh, of our lecturers told us in those days that she observed that when they get to 33 years they usually have menopause in their family luckily for them the 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 daughters they usually get married on time but they usually communicate so the elder sister asked the young younger one when did you stop menstruating he said at the age of 33 that one also has the other one at the age of the so those of them that knew in their family now knew that their daughters must finish edu their education on time or whatever they want to do on time and get married on time. because in their family they enter menopause at early age is a pattern praise the lord and for them to be able to cancel it they need to win that battle in that family otherwise it will just continue like that from generation to generation and god forbid uh, if any man marry them at the age of 37, then they should not expect any issue until they, are, they can be able to and address it, fight the battle, and win it. Amen. Unfortunately, if the man does not know, and the woman also, they don't know, and they just say, we are praying to God, we are praying to God. And God will be looking at them that you have not addressed the foundation. You need to address it. Amen. You need to visit, you need to tell God that the blood of Jesus must visit that foundation praise the lord and the battle that you need to win is the battle of unity you know i told you that i just put down three points is the battle of unity. you know since the foundation devil has been in the business of fighting unity it could be in the family in the business in the church everywhere it don't want, it doesn't want people to unite to be united because the moment you are united you pray over him you agree together over him there will be trouble he does not want unity so and that is why if somebody that causes commotion misunderstanding he will come to you and tell you that can't you see that this woman does not like you say, yeah, i've been observing it say yeah she doesn't like you what time does, does she usually prepare your meal say ah the last one i ate it was 7 p.m uh -huh. you see be observing you know, tonight you are not going to eat until 9 p.m just wait and the woman will now prepare now say, why do you usually prepare my food very late? Why do you know? And that one is uh, okay, I sorry. And later he will now go back to the woman and say, Can't you see that this man is selfish? If he's not selfish, he went to work, you went to work, and he's now telling you that this is it. tell him that he's a very selfish man, that he's a wicked man. And he said, You are if you are not selfish, you should have known that i have been busy since morning say, uh -huh. and the man will now you say tell her that she's uh, that you 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 are just watching now and then you know the discussion will just continue like that whispering to both parties just to cause what disunity and whatever power that is fighting the unity of your family just like uh we pray it during the prayer that uh, mommy led 
the Lord will fight them in the name of Jesus. Then how do you win the battle over your family? Quickly, number one, your family must be friends of God. For you to win the battle over the family, your family needs to be the friend of who? God. You know, for them to have wine at that wedding, they had to partner with Jesus Christ. If Jesus was not to be their friend, are they going to invite him for the wedding? No. They won't go there. But because they had partnership with Jesus, they could easily go back to him. And, and that is why this morning, if you are here this morning and you have not given your life to Jesus, it will be difficult for him to answer you because you don't have partnership with him. He doesn't know you. You are not his friend. Then, which means you need to trace your step back to him. The second point is to win battle over your family. You need to pray constantly. Praise the Lord. You need to pray what? Constantly. Uh, we can see that in the book of 2 Corinthians 10, from 3 to 5 says, For though we walk in flesh, we do not walk after flesh. For our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strong hosts, casting down imagination and every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So you need to pray constantly because the battle you are fighting are not physical battles. Amen. So the misunderstanding or whatever that is happening that you are observing in the family, they are not physical things. They are spiritual. And this life that we are walking up and down is, is what? is deep and spiritual some people you see them they walk with legs but spiritually they are walking upside down amen unless god does what opens your eyes you might not even see amen the lord will help us in the name of jesus he will always give us the grace to win the battle over our family in the name of jesus and the third one the last but not the least is complete obedience what did mary told the servant she told the servant that whatever he tells you, do it. Just obey completely. To win the battle over your family, you need to go to God, ask him question, Lord, what do we do? Then he can be able to tell you. You know, sometimes when your husband is talking, the Holy Spirit can tell you, don't say anything, just keep your mouth shut. And you obey. And the devil will come and say, I, I used to be it. Talk. <laughs> you need to express yourself. You must express yourself. Otherwise, this woman will enslave you. And the Holy Spirit will say, don't mind. <laughs> Just keep your mouth shut. Or it could be vice versa. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I don't know, maybe you are here this morning. You know, you, you yourself, you know, you, two people cannot deceive themselves. You cannot deceive yourselves. That you know that you are not qualified. If Jesus Christ should come today, you know that you are not ready. Just wave your hand this morning that I know that there's still something that is still missing that I need to sort out with God. Just wave your hand. If you want to sort out something with God, just wave your hand. Praise the Lord. Shall we rise on our feet? Shall we rise on our feet? We are going to prayers quickly. We are going to say, Father, I appreciate you for my family. And if you are not yet married, just know that very soon, one day, you will also have your family. So for the family that is yet to exist, you pray for, for it. Praise the Lord. So what you are doing is that you are storing water into the tank concerning the what is coming ahead of you. So you are going to say, Father, I appreciate you for my family. I exhort your name for my family. Shall we pray that shall we appreciate God for our family? Let's just thank Him because of our family. Let's appreciate Him because He's good to our family. Appreciate Him. Lord, we thank you for our family. Lord, we give you all the glory. Lord, we thank you for all the families that have been represented here this morning. Lord, we give you all the glory for your word. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You are going to say, Father, Amen. Don't forget what I told you. That even if you have peace in your family, devil is doing what? He's observing it. 
Amen. So he's just looking for an opportunity to do what? To strike. So we are going to say, Father, so therefore if you want to pray, you must do what? You must pray. So if you want to say, Father, you say it louder. Say, Father, release upon my family the spirit of unity, the spirit of love, the spirit of peace, and every other thing that you want God to release, begin to decree and declare them in the name of Jesus. Father, release upon my family the spirit of unity, the spirit of love, the spirit of peace in the name of Jesus. Lord, release upon my family the spirit of love, spirit of unity. Let there be peace in my family. 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 Let there be peace in my family in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. You know, I heard of a family that somebody was giving this testimony that the moment he observed that there's a peace in that family, he's somebody that attends uh, this white garment church. He said he will just tie the candle and they will start fighting. They had his neighbor, you know, he was confessing that they will just, they will not know where, they will just start fighting. And with time, he will unloose it, which means the family is, is what? Is sleeping. And that is why when they strike them, it will work. And he said, any moment he observed again that there's peace again, he will just tie that scandal again and they will start fighting. And that is where he's taking his own joy. Amen. What a wickedness. So we are going to say, Father, release upon my family deliverance in the name of Jesus. Let there be deliverance of any form of spiritual sleepness. Lord, deliver my family. Release your spirit of deliverance upon my family. Deliver my family from every spiritual slumbering in the name of Jesus. From every spiritual laziness. Lord, deliver my family in the name of Jesus. Deliver my family from every form of spiritual laziness in the name of Jesus. From every form of spiritual sleep. Lord, deliver my family in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You know what devil is looking for is the weak point of any family. We are going to say, Father, whatever is our family's weak point, Lord, fill it up in the name of Jesus. Fill up every weak point in my family with your grace. Whatever weak point that devil is looking for in my family to strike, fill up every weak point in my family. Fill up every weak point in my family in the name of Jesus. Father, fill up every weak point in my family in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are going to say, Father, let there be light in every dark area of my family. In the name of Jesus, in every dark area in my family, let there be light. Let there be light in every dark area of my family. Father, let there be light. Lord, let there be light. Lord, let there be light in every family represented here this morning. Lord, I decree and declare your light. Let there be light in every dark area. Lord, let there be light in the name of Jesus. Let there be light, 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 light in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You know, Deuteronomy 29, 29, that the secret things belongs to God. We are going to say, Father, reveal every deep and secret things about my family to me. Every deep and secret things about my family. Whatever I need to know about my family, Lord, reveal them to me. Every deep and secret things about my family, Lord, reveal them unto me in the name of Jesus. Lord, reveal every deep and, every deep and secret things about my family. Lord, let them be revealed unto me in the name of Jesus. Lord, let them be revealed unto me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You know, one of the beauty of you getting the revelation is that you know the next step to take. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes when God tells you that this is the thing that is going to happen, this is the this, if anybody is bringing, probably you are going to walk, and God is telling you that as you are going to walk, People will want to fight you, but don't fight. When you get to what will you fight? You will not. The, the, the Bible says the secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but to those things which are revealed belongs unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Praise the Lord. 
we are going to say, Father, every secret I need to know about my family, Lord, reveal them to me in the name of Jesus. Every secret I need to know about my family, reveal to me in the name of Jesus. Whatever I need to know about my family, Lord, reveal to me in the name of Jesus. Reveal to me in the name of Jesus. Reveal to me in the name of Jesus. Whatever I need to know about my children, whatever I need to know about my wife, Lord, reveal to me in the name of Jesus. Lord, reveal to me in the name of Jesus. Lord, reveal to me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Psalm 25 verse 14 says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear Him. He will show them His covenant. We are going to say, Father, establish your covenant upon my family. Let your covenant be established over my family in the name of Jesus. Let covenant of peace, covenant of joy, covenant of progress, prosperity, Lord, let it, be, let it be established in my family. Let your covenant be established over my family in the name of Jesus. Let your covenant be established over my family in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We are going to say, Father, whatever negative covenant that is affecting my family, let them be broken today in the name of Jesus. Whatever negative covenant that is affecting my family, Lord, let them be broken this morning in the name of Jesus. Whatever negative covenant that is operating in my family, in my lineage, in my father's house, in my mother's house, in my in-laws' house, Lord, let them be broken in the name of Jesus. Every negative covenant that is operating, that is standing against me at the edge of breakthrough, Lord, let them be broken in the name of Jesus. I stand on your altar this morning and I declare and decree them being broken in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are going to say, Father, any power anywhere that is reporting me or my family before any evil altar, I come to your presence this morning and I report them in the name of Jesus. Whatever power that is reporting me to any evil altar, any power that is reporting my family to any evil altar, I come to your own altar this morning and I begin to put them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will judge them. You will judge all those altars that are working against me and my family. Lord, I bring their matter before your altar this morning. Lord, I bring their case before you this morning. I pray that you will judge them in the name of Jesus. Those powers that are judging my family, those powers that are judging the children, Lord, I pray that you will judge them this morning in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We are going to say, Father, rebuild every broken walls in my family. In the name of Jesus, every broken wall in my family, Lord, rebuild them this morning. Whatever the enemy has broken, everything that has been broken in my family, Lord, rebuild this morning. You are the mighty builder. You are the rebuilder of every hope. Lord, rebuild everything that family has, that, that enemy has broken in my family. Lord, rebuild them this morning in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are going to say, blood of Jesus, walk through my family and scatter every oppression of darkness in the name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, walk through my family. Walk through the life of my wife walk through the life of my children, walk through my life, and let every operation of darkness, let them be destroyed this morning. Let them scatter in the name of Jesus, blood of Jesus, go into my foundation and heal every broken wall in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You know, we read it in the Bible that the secret things belongs to the Lord. We are going to say, Father, make my family a vessel that is capable of knowing your secrets. In the name of Jesus, let my family be capable of knowing every secret things in the name of Jesus. Make my family to be capable of knowing secret things in the name of Jesus. Make my family to be able to know the secret things. Make us a vessel of honor in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are going to say, Father, release your spirit of favor upon my family in the name of Jesus. Anywhere we appear, let us be favored. Release your spirit of favor upon my family. 
Lord, release your spirit of favor upon my family. Lord, release your spirit of favor upon my family. Lord, release your spirit of favor upon my family. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We are still going to repeat that prayer point. You know, some family, the moment they appear before the consulate, the person I want to interview just looked at it that I don't like this family. They are not going to get this visa. Amen. And there are some family, they might have, the, the consulate might have made up his mind that I'm not going to give and say, I just like this family. Amen. Some people, they are traveling the moment they get to the immigration. And the immigration officer just looked at the whole family. As a fa they are traveling as a family. I said, I like this family. Wow, this is a wonderful family. And you know, they will be, be the one be assisting you to do this and that. There are some family and they will just give them tough time. Amen. We are going to say, Father, release upon my family your spirit of favor in the name of Jesus. Let your favor be released upon my family. Release upon my family your spirit of favor in the name of Jesus. Release upon my family spirit of favor in the name of Jesus. Spirit of favor in the name of Jesus. Spirit of favor in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are going to say, Father, my family refused to be confused in the issues of life in the name of Jesus. We refuse to be confused in the issues of life in the name of Jesus. We refuse to be confused in the issues of life in the name of Jesus. I present my family before you this morning, before your throne of mercy, before your altar this morning. My family refused to be confused. Every arrow of confusion, every arrow of rejection, Every arrow of hatred that is fire into my family, let them backfire this morning in the name of Jesus. Let them backfire this morning in the name of Jesus. Let them backfire this morning in the name of Jesus. Let them backfire this morning in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are.